No, I uh, it got I I got it and got it painted, and then we were waiting on like a wiring kit and some other mm. shit. And there's a bunch of weird stuff I was doing that like wasn't yeah. really necessary. Like overly, I was just doing too much. Really, yeah. I was like polishing the brake caliper out because I <laughs> yeah. modified a stock one, so I sanded all the wrinkle paint off, and then yeah. show polished it and like polishing the paint and all this other shit but i was working on my van too yeah and so how's that going uh good i did it and then i got t-boned what in it last summer i didn't know that in the dodge yeah i lost i had a mechanical failure you had a new new van didn't you i thought you or not new but like a different one recently i thought i have a safari yeah and then I have my 75 Chevy, that orange one I've had since, right. like, COVID, a little bit before COVID. And right. then I have I a... you got that green one or something. Yeah, that's the 78 Dodge that yeah. used to be damned. That got T-boned? Yeah, I redid it because I, I put new front clip on it mm-hmm. um, because it was all roached. Dan yeah. had it, and then uh, Davey had it after that. But it had shitty old body work. Zach had it, lovely. Yeah. And it had shitty old body work, so... I redid it all, bought, bought used parts for it, redid it all, and then I had a mechanical failure. I went to get lunch at the fix one day, and mm-hmm. I was driving down 27th Street and lost the lost clutch and brake yeah. going down the hill there to Holmes. And you just had to blow through the light. I had to blow through the light and yeah. got T-boned. I was trying to avoid a car on the left mm-hmm. and got smoke showed on Oof. the right. But... So now I had to replace both side barn doors, mm-hmm. the passenger front door, the fender. Dang, they got you good, huh? Yeah, because it like hit me in the front end, and, and then it threw the van like that yeah. onto the driver. She hit me in her right front in my door and fender. Dude, that's almost exactly what happened to my G20. It, hit, yeah. it, it whipped shit me around to hit the side doors. Did you hit any parked cars or anything? No, dude. Yeah. When it hit that, it, it pushed me back straight, and I just rolled like... A half a block up the street, and then and it stopped. <laughs> and I was just like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. You're and I crawled it underneath and it and saw the clutch lever just chilling. Yeah. So I'd have it towed. Now, now that lady's trying to sue me for like uh, half a million dollars. Jesus. And my insurance company's just like laughing. Yeah. I looked her up on Instagram. She's at like in Mexico right now. <laughs> I was like, "What the hell?" Yeah. Like you're so hurt. Right. You're on an international vacation. Yeah. <laughs> like, whatever. All right. Well, I guess we'll do the uh, the no- my normal thing. Welcome back. It's another edition. Upbeat edition, as always. A dual sunglass edition, which means we're in for some good stuff. <laughs> uh, we got an old homie, singer, songwriter, performer, sound man, bartender. Man, I haven't bartended in... DJ, Long these are all time. just things yeah. you are that you've embodied over the years. Can't leave that behind. Nobody even forgets the bartender. Nobody forgets the bartender. <laughs> we got Mr. Marty Bush with us tonight. He's fresh off the road, mm. fresh off a six and a half weeks. She said, "Yeah, that's wild." Yeah, somewhere around there, basically, like since February, start of February. What are you guys traveling in now? You got this newer E three fifty. I think it's like a 2012. Um, it does the job. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty solid. It's got a new engine in it now. Yeah. Um, it's got that horrible Triton 5.4, Sick. which may be the worst engine ever produced in America, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, they just blow spark plugs left and right. And we popped one in Laramie last August. And uh, Laramie, Laramie, Wyoming is a difficult place to get into a mechanic. Like there's a lot yep. of people, and uh, oddly and enough, a, but there's a technical college there. Right, that's where I went to college. <laughs> yeah, oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, I, I went to that. biotech. I didn't know that. But uh, but yeah, every every everybody we called was like, you know, I can get you in in two months, and we're like, no, that's not gonna work. Like we're on the road, but we finally found this Napa certified dude who took twelve hours to drill and tap a spark plug. Oh yeah. And uh, didn't drill and tap the spark plug. His genius idea was that he was going to JB weld it back into oh. the header. 
And uh, so we got about a mile down the road, and then our engine compartment was on fire. And that, Damn. I was pissed. <laughs> But, yeah, uh, that'd be a tough one on the side of the highway out there. Where yeah. were we at on forty? Yeah, we were headed towards Cheyenne. Okay, yeah, that's and that's a hairy stretch. I used to run yeah. that highway a lot, man. Yeah, yeah, we ended up just getting towed to the dealership and leaving the van there, and saying just long block R and R, just replace the whole thing. Yeah, a, there's not even a gas station. No, there's between even, that's so it's yeah. really crazy. There's not nowhere to stop. Yeah. In that stretch of highway between Laramie and Cheyenne, yeah. it's wild. Because it's, it's There's some weird. cheap That's gas right weird... there, though. We were right by that exit. I don't know if you remember. There's, like, that one weird gas station. Yeah. That's, like, north of the highway. Yep. And it's always, like, a dollar cheaper than anywhere yeah. else in the state. I wonder if it's because it's on native land or it something. It is, yeah. Yeah. But there's that weird statue where it looks like they were going to make an entire Abraham But Lincoln, it's just his head. But it's just the head, and the rest of it's just a giant block. Yeah. Yeah. It's so weird. And that had to be what that is, is that somebody yeah. started and just didn't finish. It's cool, though. It is cool. Yeah. It's, it's, there's some, there's some, that's a weird place. Yeah, I like that part of the country a lot. Yeah. Living out there is pretty weird. Yeah. You see some things. Yeah, I'm sure. Like, lots of weird looking semis rolling at night. Mm-hmm. Lots of, that shit with that Matthew Shepard dude. Yeah. That happened like just north of Laramie. Yeah. So there was like a lot of like weirdo, like mil- militia dudes yeah. out there. If you can avoid that. Yeah, no, you can avoid <laughs> you gotta that. You got to avoid that. But. Yeah. But I'm yeah. sure you probably. The country is like, pretty, man. Like, yeah, no, it's yeah. nice. It's a great place to visit. Yeah. And most, I mean, most of the shows I play up there, like, like I get up into northern Wyoming and Montana right. quite a bit. But it's always at like, it's like Livingston or like, you know, like I'm playing like these little Jackson tourist Hole. towns. Yeah, Jackson Hole. Casper's um, probably a big one. That's I, I've never done Casper. You're Casper. I've, I've done done Cody a few times. Jackson Hole, Livingston, Ennis. Uh, you ever go to see the uh, house made of dinosaur bones? I haven't. Yeah, I don't uh, think you can go in it anymore because they yeah. finally realized that. Like, apparently, I think something like. I think there's like a deal. I don't think I you. I think it was closed. I've seen it, but we didn't go there. I think it was closed down already when I was in school. Yeah. But they like started deducing that like everyone that was the caretaker of the place would end up getting like horrific cancer, <laughs> and it's because they were living there. Okay. And like apparently dinosaur bones have radiation in them, so I, you're basically living in a radiation that's, field. That's <laughs> like, what? What? <laughs> that's just what I remember being yeah. told. It's That's a weird wild. place, dude. Special. Do like, you think it's from like the comet that killed him? <laughs> I, get, I don't know. We'd have to look that up. That's I'm not wild. sure. I, I, don't uh, I don't know about the that. The Special Olympics is their headquarters are in Wy- in Wyoming. Yeah. And that's, I I was very curious as to why, because we could volunteer when we were at school. Yeah. And I was like, yo, why is this here? Probably and the lady told me. Not for profit um, tax breaks, I would assume. No. Be in Wyoming. No. No. Nope, that's what you would assume. Yeah. How about, Marty, that there's so much incest in the state of Wyoming <laughs> per capita oh my God. that there's that many people who oh, are handicapped from it? To all of my friends and people who know me in Wyoming. Um, well, it's not that. people that live in the cities. It's <laughs> yeah. these people, they just, dude, out there in the middle of nowhere in that yeah. place. There's it's hard, it's hard to find land up there with water, even. Yeah, like, well, water, there ain't nothing to do when you're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. But smoke meth and get drunk. Yeah. And you do that with your uncle daddy long enough, <laughs> I guess, this things <laughs> happen, you know what I mean? But I always thought that was crazy to me. When I heard that, I was, like, mind-blowing. I was like, man. Because, huh. like, you would notice, like, you know... When you're in a small town like that, like that band Teenage Bottle Rocket, mm-hmm. they're from Laramie. Yeah. And that dude has a, had like a skate shop or some shit yeah. there when I was in school. So he was just like, you could just go hang. Like, mm-hmm. it was like a weird thing where you're like, aren't you like super like famous like <laughs> for being a punk band? They were right. like a pretty big a punk, punk band. band yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's just like, yeah, they were just Wyoming locals yeah. up there. But you're close to Denver. I mean, that's kind of how Laramie is, though. Like, Yeah. I mean, like, I was saying, sorry. Well, here we go. Do whatever. Saying, uh, you know, like I'm doing some dates with with Sean Hess in September, and uh, the bar that I always play in Laramie, like he works there. Which so bar? Like, uh, the Roughed Up Duck. The Roughed Up Duck. 
It's right by uh, right by New to You, that thrift store. I mean, the duck was definitely around. Yeah, when you were there. The the one I hung out, I saw Bob Log the third, mm-hmm. and he played at this place. I can't. I want to think maybe it's a Big Nose Kate's, but it's a bar. I can't remember. I'd have to look it up. But is this, it like on the main drag? It's down in old downtown. Yeah, and there's a. It has a giant hawk, stuffed hawk. Oh, the Black Hawk. The Black Hawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it has the bullet hole in yeah. the mirror. It's kind of like a college kid dance club now. Really? It's still called the Black Hawk. But yeah, like a couple times. Like I played um, with Willie T. Taylor um, at Roughed Up Duck like maybe a year and a half ago, something like that. And then we were like, oh, let's go over to the Black Hawk after the show because the Roughed Up Duck closes a little earlier. And it's a smaller bar. It's you know, real focused on roots music and stuff. But we got over there, and it was like just, yeah, you know, and it was just college kids and techno music. It was, it was weird because like they had like upstairs that was always going on, mm-hmm. and then downstairs yeah, they got, would always have. It's got the bathrooms down in the basement yeah. with that like really slippery staircase. Yeah, which like I felt like I fell down and just did the. <laughs> like yeah, all the way yeah. it's like the longest <laughs> like well, that linoleum place is cool. staircase there's like a, a picture in there the day prohibition started yeah and then there's a one right next to it it's from the day prohibition ended That's and they've cool. been on that bar's been there since that the long. old west yeah but someone tried to murder their uh husband or wife for cheating on them and they, in the bar. Sh- they were on the roof across the street with a fucking scoped rifle and, <laughs> and shot through the window. And that's the bullet. There's a bullet hole still it's in still the there. mirror. They would, they wouldn't, huh? It was, that place has a lot of history. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I saw Bob log the third there when I was nice. in school. Lo- that was cool. When I was there, um, the in... shack shakers played there. Legendary nice. shack shakers. That's awesome. When I was, when I was there this last time, uh, in February, um, who was I talking to? talking to somebody at at roughed up duck that's like a musician that you might know i don't remember who it was but they were saying that they're starting to do oh it was a uh, john poland from uh john poland's whaley and gaze like, okay it's like a super shredder finger style okay guy yeah like, um but he like does everything on a 12 string and it's like the most complicated crap you've ever heard uh but he was saying that they're they're getting ready to start doing live music at at blackhawk that would be cool. Yeah. That place was cool. There's the cowboy. Yeah, I've never been in there. It's the got cowboy. the sign that's on the main street or yeah, whatever. It's yeah, it's like the long single yeah. story. That place, that's like, that's the rough daddy bar. Yeah. That's for the tough guys. That's yeah, the rodeo the dudes, huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, oil workers. Yeah. You know, migrant workers. Like, a lot of like roughneckers. Yeah. But that was at ranch hands. That's where they all hung out. So I'm, I think the roughed up duck's probably somewhere in the middle of that. Right. Like, it's not a college kid bar, but there's some college kids that hang out there. And yeah. it's not a full on, like, towny bar, but there's some townies that hang out there. It's, it's a good mix. Cowboys County there. Bar. Yeah. For sure. And that's a weird town because there's two colleges there's yeah. the automotive school, then there's the university. Yeah. But it's just a weird, it's a weird <laughs> place, dude. I used to live yeah. on 420 North 20th Street. Okay. In an old military barrack. It was a studio. That's where I lived there. It was a studio. Yeah. Studio place. It's weird. It was a weird I, I like that town, man. I, it's cool. You I played Cheyenne at all? You know, I haven't. Um, there just hasn't been a reason to. Yeah. Like, the Cheyenne's cool. That's Lar- where my Laramie, treat, Laramie treats me really well. And I always do like Denver, Fort Collins, Golden, mm-hmm. Boulder. Like, so it's like there's too many things like packed in. Right there, where it's like, well, I'm playing Laramie, so I can't play Fort Collins this trip because people will just drive up, or vice versa. You know, it's right. like 45 minutes or whatever. And then, like, Cheyenne, it's just like, it's just far enough out of the way where it would mess that up, I guess. I yeah. Just, I just haven't done yeah, it. Yet. Yeah, you dig it. Cheyenne's a cool town. There's yeah. a bitchin' record store there called Ernie November. Okay. It's been there forever. It's got an old downtown, old west. If you go and you want to like do something cool, there's a place called the Plains Hotel. Okay, and it's been there since the downtown of Laramie, or of Cheyenne, is the same downtown from when they built right. the town. Yeah. The railroad is right there. Mm-hmm. It's all still there. Like all the buildings are still there. Yeah, it's fucking cool. 
Taco John's I, world headquarters. I do. I Cheyenne do love Miami. me some Taco John's, man. <laughs> they, dude, there's all this like weird fast food and stuff. Where, yeah. Like Gunther Tootie's in Denver was yeah. always a weird place that was cool to go. Well, to. When I was when I was growing up, the I mean for quite a while, the only fast food restaurant we had in the, in Chinook, Kansas, was a Taco John's. That's where you're John's. from, huh? Yeah. Chinook. We had a Taco John's, and I I was like probably nine or ten, and we got a McDonald's, and everybody freaked out. Old Chinook. Yeah. Man, when did you come to Kansas City, Marty? Um, let's see. I want to say like 2007, 2008, something like that. Okay. Yeah. So, shit, not. I lived in Lawrence for quite, like, maybe six years before that, too, though. Right. So, you were in the metro. Yeah. So, what, where were you at in Lawrence? What were you doing out there? Um, well, I ended up there for school stuff. Um, I was just in the music program. Um, the KU? Yeah, but I cool. didn't, didn't, uh, I didn't like showing up very much. Right. And, uh, and I was playing in a hardcore band at the time that started getting good tour offers and things like that. So I was like, why am I going to school for this when I can just do it? And, yeah. And bailed on that. But I'd, I worked at the replay for a long time. Um, Probably five or six years, something like that. Because how old are you, Marty? Uh, Forty-four. Okay, yeah. So yeah. you're. It's very possible that we cross paths out there because you I, were just how, a little. You're a little younger than me, right? I'm forty. Yeah. But when I was 17, 16, 17, I worked for Jeff Forty at Pipeline. Okay. Yeah, and so I, 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 used I didn't to sound work, at Bottleneck in Granada. Right. For a long so time I was too, working yeah. shows there as a teenager, but that's how I met Stevie Cruz. Yeah. I met Stevie when I was a teenager. Um. Rhino, if you remember Rhino, mm-hmm. he was always around. Rob Brand, Brandon, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. how I know Rob. Uh, Jeff, obviously. Yeah. He's still around. But, yeah, so it's, like, weird because there's all these people that I met, you know. As, there, yeah. As a kid that was just there that loved music. And then mm-hmm. down the road, I just, again, we all cross paths again. Well, it seems like a lot of that union. group has, like, landed here. Yeah. Too, you know. And I lived in Bonner, you know yeah. what I mean? So I was, like, in the middle. And my sister lived out there. Yeah. She was part of, like, the sharp skinhead craze of the yeah. that was late fun. 90s, early 2000s. Working my 21-year-old ass, maybe weighed 170 pounds wet, working door at the replay and having to fight those dudes on a regular basis. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you fought her basis. friends. Monty used to always yeah. do crazy shit, A cab. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Sean, low life Sean. Actually, Sean and Acab, I, I remember specifically because yeah. they were not assholes. Yeah, like they. No, Sean was cool because he skated. He's a big time skateboarder. Yeah. Sean's still around. He's still yeah. out there. Nice. Acab. There was one guy specifically who I'm not going to name, but uh, is it old just kind of just kind of gave me hell for years, and he he, he was bigger than me. Obviously, everybody yeah. was bigger than me. Oh, but might have been Mike. There was. Biggie, I'm not. I'm not gonna, I'm, you know, you know. You're gonna him. tell me. Yeah, I definitely you know. Him. Him. You have to tell I'll, me. I'll afterwards. tell you later. I'll tell you later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is a there is a night where uh, like him and his buddies all roll in to replay. It's early and there's not a lot of people in there yet, and we're just all just like, God damn it. And there was a uh, a kid that lived at the pirate house uh, with me, who had like long dreadlocks. And uh, this one dude, like, walks up behind him and lights one of his dreadlocks on fire at the bar. And so, of course, we had to kick him out. But it was, like, this whole thing. And, like, like I got, I got the hell beat out of me. Like, we got him out. But it was, like, a it was the most expensive ejection of all yeah. time. Like, like I, I paid for it for sure. And it had, had uh, Sean and Acab not, like, calmed it down and helped out. It would it would have been way worse. Yeah, yeah, they were all pretty well maniac status. Mm-hmm. They were, had weird shit, AK forty sevens, yeah, like Vietnam War reenacting. Yeah, and like one wasn't of, really had, wasn't really like my scene. Launchers and rocket yeah. launchers and shit. They were crazy people. But I met a lot of cool folks through those for sure. Those dudes and you know, I'd coming from a small town high school, like a little bit of bullying violence wasn't that foreign to me at the time you know yeah because there's only fucking 20 yeah. kids in your class so right. somebody's bound that you're bound to get yeah get into some scuffles yeah, I, had, I had some had some good ones in high school yeah i bet uh so you moved here for ku that mm. didn't work out no which 
you know. Which I'm glad. Like, yeah, like I've it, you know, you. a lot of people are like, That's man, like if, I had just, R- if I had just applied myself and stuck to it, I think now my life would be exactly the same. What, I'd just be a, in, uh, a, a lot, you, a lot more You'd be doing the debt. same thing you're doing, but yeah. with a piece of paper that says you graduated and from a, college? Like, and, a, and a bunch of debt. Yeah. Like, yeah, I got that. I got all that. Yeah. What, uh, so I probably met you not long after. Yeah, you were one of those. You moved to Kansas City. I mean, I mean Probably first couple of years I was here for right. sure, yeah. Because when ha- you, you would have been working at the union uh-huh. when we all ended up when I was dealing drugs and, and just that was that was a little. A job. I guess I'd been here for a while then. I yeah, think. that would have, that would have been. But like I, th- I pro- 2010, I 2011, sure something like that. Already, because yeah. I knew everyone already. That was a weird deal, and people. I, when I first moved here, I worked worked at Buzzard for a minute. Didn't really like that all that much. And I worked at. A, I've never been a fan of the Buzzard. It was more fun back then. Oh, I re- it was like, fun, but it was just like, my, yeah. you know. Like, when I was back there, it was like Steve Tulipana and Metal Mark were DJing every Wednesday yeah. and Sunday. It was a little more like. I remember my our band played it was there different. once. But it was always like being a car guy. Mm-hmm. Westport in general just wasn't a place that we. You, do, we were, you don't we want to take your the cars brick, there. <laughs> we went yeah. to the Brick a lot because yeah. they had a lot of shows that we would yeah. go to. But, yeah, we didn't really. Harry's Country Club for a while after that. Yeah, I which a little at Harry's. I kind of liked. Like, yeah. like, I liked the idea of the place, but it wasn't, like, I didn't really fit in. Yeah. There, I was like, oh, fucking country and western bar, like, with a great whiskey selection. Cool, I'm going to have a blast here. But it was a very, like, somebody standing over your shoulder watching how you put ice in a glass kind of place. You know, and there were like mm-hmm. tests every week and stuff like that. It was it, that was it was not for me. I was always you know? oblivious to those places because I never drank anything, but I didn't have any money, so it'd be like right. this, whatever the cheapest. Oh, I thing couldn't you afford have. to hang yeah. out there. There's, <laughs> that's for sure. Just like, give me the cheapest thing you got. You want you want how much? Like I took Natalie there, um, maybe a year ago, something like that, just because she had never been. And we're like, all right, we're just gonna, you know, it's cool because she drinks a lot of whiskey too. And, it's like it's cool stuff, but like we can't afford any of that stuff. So we're just gonna order four roses. We're gonna get one one a piece, and then we're gonna bail because it's still like twelve dollars for a one ounce pour of a four yeah. four roses yellow label. You know, that's crazy. And so we get order it very specific, like yellow label. Don't want single barrel. Don't want the small batch. Don't want any of the signature ones you have. We just want the regular. Well, because it's what's in their rail there, you know, yeah. just the well four roses. And they're like, all right, we got you. And they bring them. And I take one sip and I'm like, oh my God, this is the single barrel. How much is it? And we go and like, it's like $40 for each, for each shot. And I had like, Jeez. we just like, don't drink it, don't drink it. I had to call the waitress over and be like, listen, we can't pay for this. It was like, we wanted four roses. And she's like, oh, I thought it was the same thing. And we're like, no, it's not. <laughs> Like it, it was a, it was an expensive day. Yeah, yeah. I was like going to uh, whenever Port Fonda first opened. Yeah. Like I used to just take chicks there. Yeah. Because I would like party with Patrick and mm-hmm. and uh, what Dan. Was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, and, I mean, everybody was working there for right. a minute. Yeah. And, and well, but who was the other owner guy? Uh, oh, I don't know. Fuck. They I were. Just, I just knew Patrick. Because Patrick was always in the kitchen, and there was yeah. the other guy who would be out front, but he would see me. Yeah, and he knew I didn't barely have any money, so like when I came in, they'd be like, "Oh shit, here come like free appetizers." Right. They'd be bringing over the like, "This is like a two hundred dollars shot." They'd yeah. like give us shots of tequila. I was like, "Oh man, these guys make me and seem all that mezcal. really cool." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that was always. I liked going there because it would it would be one of our friends behind the bar every time. Every be time. like, hey, have you tried this one? Nope. Oh, yeah. Dan, Nate, yeah. Tyler, the food was great. Yeah. You know, I can't speak. Whatever happened with that place? I haven't been in town. I don't know. It's, I think it's one of those. I don't know, man. It's just like anything else. Like things go away. Yeah, Yeah. I think there's allegations of. Oh no! (laughs) But which is like when you're around these people, it's like, yeah. uh, (laughs) What do you? You're shocked. Like, Mm -hmm. what do you guys mean? You guys were all. Hey, it's one of those situations where it's like, weren't you all just partaking in this debauchery together? Yeah. I think it just debauchery is okay when things are 
a, like agreed upon. Yeah, when it's yeah. like uh, the rock and like if you're in the rock and roll scene, there's mm-hmm. debauchery. Yeah, and everyone engaged in that scene is you're down with the debauchery, right? right. So it's like when the debauchery changes, and then all of a sudden it's for suburban moms to go to. Right. And then the, the, the staff changes to uncool people. Yeah. And then if you don't pick up on that, you think things are still the way yeah. they used to and be. Maybe somebody stopped paying attention. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. But I don't know that. I don't know. That was details. a very, very uh, gentle way to skirt all of that. Yeah, I don't. You thought know. of running for office or something? <laughs> no, I just I don't. I won't speak on it because yeah. I know those people personally, and I've never seen. I don't know what. To be clear, I don't. I, know I don't either. I just know that there's allegations. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah, and that's whatever. But same thing. I could tell you about places. There's a coffee shop I'm banned from where they say some buck wild shit about me that yeah. everybody hears and is like, "That ain't true." Yeah, and it's not true. Like, yeah. I there's people that go around saying I abduct women. It's like. I abduct. Yeah, I abduct women. This is a big basement. Yeah. Yes, as you can see, I have a plenty of room. I've got nothing. I, I've got. I'm hiding all these secrets, yeah. <laughs> and I've got all the time in the world when I'm not working. I've right. got a teenage yeah. daughter yeah. full time. Yeah. Just, people are crazy, man. It's a wild world we live in these it days. It is. It is. And yeah. No. Ger- generally, what? like I don't. If I know. If I know some shit. Mm. Like I don't give a fuck. I ain't gonna skirt just around nothing. I'll just straight up yeah. call you out. I mean, I'll tell you what coffee shop is. It's Blip. I think yeah. that place is a shithole. I don't even know. Is that the one in Bottoms? Yeah. Yeah. I think those people suck. <laughs> uh, if you know, they're on that level. Yeah. If I catch you slipping. <laughs> Get called out. It's on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I don't give a shit. You know, there's a, there's a part of me that. Like, you know, of course, like, we were talking about bullies and stuff like that, you know, and that's, like, bullies are bullies, whether it's, like, a dude picking on somebody smaller than them or somebody with more money picking on somebody with less money. Bully's a bully, right? Yeah. You know, like, so there's a part of me that, like, and I hate a bully. Like, I absolutely hate a bully no matter what. So there's a part of me that always wants to be, like, somebody said something about this, fuck that. Like, yeah, you know, like... If somebody's being a bully, I believe the person who's being bullied almost always, you know? But also, like, I'm getting to the age where, like, and I'm just tired of being in a city and there's always something going on. Like, like I just kind of want to just, like, be out somewhere where there's not that many people so I don't have to, yeah, like, deal with. Dan says it. it best. He always goes, yeah, but what did you do? When people start telling him stories, he goes, yeah, yeah but what did you do? And you're like, fuck, what did I do? Yeah, but on that particular situation, that place could fucking go up in flames. And yeah, I'd stand and I'd stand with a smile on my face and watch it think, go. You know what? Back when we were practicing, when Hyborian was practicing at uh, Union, yeah, library, I went there to get coffee a couple times. I don't really know that much about the place at all. Yeah, they got a strict, uh, strict no Tyler policy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know me, dude. I, I've been staying yeah. on business since I met you, and yeah. I just keep it real. Like I don't know yeah. no other way. I just tell you. Yeah. If you want my two cents, I'm gonna give it to you. Yeah. Tell you how I see it. That's just how it is. And I got told if you don't uh, adhere to our ideology, yeah, then you're no longer welcome. Huh. And that was the new rule, and I'm one of many people that have been asked to not come back. Really? Yeah, they're on some like militant queer shit dude where they're like it's like dude i don't care about any of that yeah <sighs> we just be people yeah can, out, can i just come here and get coffee and not have to have you jam your politics in my face because yeah. i don't care like <laughs> whatever yeah better for it that place used to be it's a weird it used to be about motorcycles and i've always right. told this to people like the thing about car scene and motorcycles is no one that's not really a thing. Yeah. Like, there's, you know, you don't, it's about the cars and the bikes. Like, right. It's, it's for everyone. It's the most accepting culture right. <laughs> probably yeah. in the world because it's for everyone. Mm. And there's subcultures within it for every yeah. type of. And, and maybe some of those subcultures are individually 
a little more inclusive than yeah. Well, they all e- are exclusive than inclusive, right? Because yeah, like, fifty-five Chevy people, you gotta have a fifty-five yeah. Chevy, right? If right. you're into Corvettes, that's Corvette people. But when you go to the car meets, yeah. everybody mingles, and has a good time. You know, what I mean? you can't right. join a lowrider club if you have a Honda Accord, right? That's all riced out. You know yeah. what I mean? I is that should I not say that? <laughs> I don't. I Fuck! Don't. I can say it all at once. It's your show, man. Hondas. That's how I started building cars. Yeah. Uh, so, what was the hardcore band you were in back in the day? Um, it was called Salt the Earth. Okay, I know uh, that band. Yeah, it was awful. It was yeah. fun, though. We had yeah, a good that was time. good. We had a good I, time. I'm, I, I am very... Um, I feel blessed and intrigued. <laughs> uh, I'm blessed to be around and know you as a person... And then I I'm so intrigued by like the growth of people yeah. and like your musical journey <laughs> is like it's not but, that weird. I it's, don't No, it's not like, weird, yeah. but it's like also you're there the whole time. Like yeah. you your song writing is like the same. Like I know it's you, right? right like yeah, I know yeah. that it's a Marty song. Right. But then we got to see the white girl thing and that went crazy. Like that was, that was a wild deal. That was fun. You had that whole fucking deal that you made. Pyramid lights. of lights. Yeah, the pyramid of lights. That was cool. Which that was like electronic. Yeah, but I wasn't like it was, I think it the wasn't. reason it didn't actually ever really work was because I would I refused to, to be like, here's this cool light thing that i built and i'm gonna dj these songs that i mo- made like i had like all the different drum machines and synthesizers and i was playing stuff right live i mean it was drum machines still i guess but but yeah like it was every, like the weirdest one man band ever yeah it was, it was cool. a real weird one man band it was a, just a really yeah. weird one man band yeah yep. that's all there is and it wasn't really dance music no it was just it it was poppy, I guess. It was like, yeah. it was weird. It was just yeah. weird. It was like yeah. something you couldn't, it was. Uh, and maybe that was the thing too. Non- it was too gen- weird. It was non-genre specific. Yeah. It was, it was a little too weird maybe for, no, for mass know. consumption. It probably. might have been, yeah. but that'll happen. Yeah. But it was cool. It was fun though. And it was like a great way to like do stuff with people that I wouldn't necessarily have ended up in a band with, but was friends with and enjoyed making music with like, had Keenan Nichols play guitar on one track and right. like uh Clarence, like Dirge Hansen uh did like hip hop stuff on one track. Yeah. And it was like it was just it was just a fun way to like, well, I'm not in a band right now, but I need to be doing something. Um and I like hanging out with my friends. So that Dude, was like, like that was a that was a cool cool thing. We yeah. had like a really cool scene. Of like music because it was like everyone like it didn't yeah. matter right like that was the thing that used that to be really to cool at Kansas City yeah. I think is that like it wasn't like other cities where because it was a small enough city right that it's like well there's only four hardcore dudes like and there's only four dudes that are into municipal waste and there's only four dudes <laughs> like right. it's like we all hung out together in places like the riot room you know. I mean, we're I'm a big part of that. Just the musicians, right? Yeah, that's what like, I'm saying. Yeah. It didn't matter what genre of yeah. music. We, we all, were had, all to, we had to hang out with each other. We were yeah. all playing, exactly. working in bars. We were all playing yeah. music. And then there'd be like, man, those parties that Skyler and them used to have at their house over there on mm-hmm. 39th were so tight because yeah. just be in, it'd just be every pool. It would pool. make no sense at it'd all. It'd make yeah. no sense. There'd yeah. be like every there'd be like people playing music. It would be like one of the some like weird scene from a movie, right? Mm-hmm. Where you walk in like it's like you know. I used to just go get high upstairs with mm. fucking Keenan, and we'd be. I was always shooting dice. Yeah, I learned how to There's shoot a, dice, and I'm fucking. That's the thing. Another thing that I do like about Kansas City, or it used to, because yeah, it doesn't really happen anymore, but uh, or at least around me, maybe that was, maybe I've won too many dice games. I don't know. But yeah, no, but you know, I, yeah, there, you there was all, a, there was always a dice game going on for a, years, dude. Years. There was always a CeeLo game going yeah. on, dude. I loved yeah. it when at, at Riot Room, we go down the basement. Roll up a fatty yeah. after hours, and I'd be out there. I'd just be begging, like, let's play, yeah. let's roll dice. Because yeah. I, I, you know me, I'm working the door. I didn't right. get paid shit. No, you know, we were trying to tip me out. Right. Which also, in hindsight, there's some nights where it's like, yo, didn't I save your ass, man? <laughs> like, <laughs> some of you out there, once. like, more I was once. saving your guys' asses yeah. more than once. Yeah. And, uh, 
But man, I used to love. I I I would. I love finding drugs. If I found a bag, if you you didn't want to fuck up and like, I was old, I was dirty, dog. Yeah. I was like turning pockets at the yeah, Zara bar. You're, you're uh, not exactly the same person you were. No, not at, <laughs> not at all. Yeah. I was. Yeah. I'd turn your pockets out quick if I caught you doing coke in the bathroom at yeah. Zara bar, dude. Real fast. Yeah. I would if I found your purse. And you had a prescription of Adderall. That was gone. I was taking that. And I was I would take all this shit. If I took drugs off of you at the bar when I was bouncing, because mm-hmm. I had to know, no matter how many drugs I did, when I worked for Timmy, he's like, no drugs. Right. And if I saw you doing drugs, that was it. No drugs. Yeah. But then I'd take them drugs right down to the uh, the office after hours, and everybody would be down there counting them fat sacks. Like, yo, who wants to buy this? Right. <laughs> I take everybody's money that way. Yeah. If you were a bartender, I was you, either selling you drugs or I was gonna. Did we work at right? Did we work at right at the same time? Or were you? You had already left, I think, when I started there, right? No, I think you were there for part of it. I mean, I was there all the time, but I don't know if I was working. Dude, I remember there. who all was working when I worked there. I was just existed at that point because yeah. I had like three lives going on. Right. I had that. I had illegal business. I was working at a body shop. I was staying up four or five days at a time. Yeah. Just living it. Being yeah. wild. Like that was wild. like the one little period in my adult life where I wasn't like really touring a lot or doing doing a lot of music. It was yeah. like kind of like that period kind of before Hyborian really started doing anything. No, yeah, and you would have been working there because, yes, we yeah. worked together there. Okay. Because Bates was there doing the thing. And, yeah, and he was guys, doing maintenance and stuff right. when I was and there. And that's when yeah. you guys started Hyborian, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes, you were definitely working there. All right. For sure. I just did sound there mostly. Like, yeah. I'd fill in a bartending shift every now and then. Yeah, no, no. You were definitely there. Yeah. They used to do that karaoke thing on Sunday nights. Yeah. Candace and, and Turney. Yeah. They're doing that again now down at Logan's Bar. Yeah, at Hillsiders. Hillsiders. That's a cool spot where Logan's Dude, been getting a lot of country I music, actually, which is I, cool. Of all the places in Kansas City that we've lost, that I just... It, you know, a lot of times I feel like this just isn't my city anymore with, with Riot gone and Westport Saloon gone and Davies gone. and Every venue that yeah. we knew is gone. Um, you know, thank, oh, God, that, thank, God, we, the, thank God we still have Record Bar, you know, like, and the Brick. That was our but, place. We were heavy because of the car guy shit, right? Yeah. Like, we were heavy Davies Uptown. Yeah. They had all Davies, the Brick, and Record Bar. Yeah. They would book all those... Last of the V8s, yeah. the Throttlers, Cretan, and yeah. they all played there. And I, I'm convinced now it's because they all had parking yeah. for us. Because otherwise, right. the Hot Rod guys weren't going to show well, and up. And like New Record Bar doesn't, so right. they don't do a lot of stuff like that. I mean, that's, that's like literally a thing. I know. I tried to get them to book Lords of Altamont, and they yeah, wouldn't do that's it. That's not going to happen. I was pissed. But what I was saying is, Hillsiders kind of, kind of starting to feel like home a little bit. I like it there. Yeah, like, it's I like cool. That bar. Can, Candace see? behind the bar pretty regularly. Candace is back. Like, uh, like, Amanda's there. Yeah. Everybody that works for Logan is chill. Yep. Who played the other night? And, uh, oh, Lou and the Knockembacks played yeah. their last show. Oh, and uh, so randomly sometimes I'll walk in there and like one of my favorite songwriters in America will just be in there playing to five people, which yeah. is wild. Like I walked in there the other night and this kid was singing on stage who, you know, in the the world that we live in where we consume music the way we consume music, you don't always know what your favorite mm-hmm. artists look like, right? Because mm-hmm. you just put it on a fucking playlist and and hit shuffle and, and that's that's that. But I walk in, this kid's just shredding through a Guy Clark song, but doing it like this weird bluegrass version of it by himself. There's like three, four people in the bar and I walked in and kind of like, you know, gave him like a holy crap. That's awesome. Look, yeah. Sat down at the bar, and he goes, he goes, "Hey, are you Marty Bush?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he goes, "My name's David Miner." And I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> and it was like his last song, and then we ended up hanging out all night. Yeah. But like, you know, it's, just, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's weird shit. Yeah. I I've been. Uh... I think Todd Day Wait played there pretty recently too. We were on yeah. the road when that happened, but. Um... It's Played with him fucking, in Nashville, like dude. It's been cool, like early February, something like that. It's cool that 
country got so popular, right? Mm. And then now it's like, it's cool because now there's all these underground type people. And in different types of In different types that are, yeah. are able to like get out there and tour because of it, right? Mm-hmm. They're like, it's like a very punk rock thing. Yeah. You know, I had Coleman. He came over and was on the show, which was mm-hmm. fucking cool. I didn't think that was going to happen. Yeah. Like, and I really dig that guy. Um, I really like his music. Yeah. Um, Are you talking about four? Yeah. 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 And he ended up being super awesome, man. Yeah. He's just a really awesome dude. And when you talk to him, it's just like, yo, like, he's not, no ego. Yeah. Like, nothing. Like, just chill, dude. Yeah, I think he's. Uh, he, I think he's building a pretty good reputation for himself, dude. And it's the, my initial reaction to it when I first heard of it right. being a thing was like, seriously, we got to yeah. do this again. Like, yeah, you know, like I, I love Hank Williams, but there hasn't been much from that <laughs> that it, tree that I've been into. Yeah, since. see, I I enjoy and, all of it. Yeah, you know, I grew up on Hank Williams Jr. because of my parents. Yeah, see, my my dad absolutely hated him oh really it was like it was like my parents the opposite he would like flip out and he'd yeah. go on these long rants about it and you know my parents were the total opposite my dad loved it yeah and that was like you know that skinner nugent like that's the kind of shit my dad yeah. was just stoked on you know i think i think that i think that for, the four and the strange band stuff like it seems it seems like he's kind of going about things right. I feel like, dude, totally independent. Mm. Um, you know, I wouldn't mind having that kind of a leg up, but yeah, but and I don't know. But I can't blame the guy for it either. You know, like, uh, yeah. Also, um, I like that he just it it is. It's not. It's just. Unless you know, then you don't. Right. You, if you don't know, then you you would have no yeah. idea based off the name, right? right. That it's like. Who it is. But, dude, I, I mean, I'm glad that I, I'm lucky enough to call him a friend now. And, oh, like, yeah. and, and we stay in contact, which is, like, even cooler, you know? Yeah. But, it, I mean, we got trained at, you know, working at Riot Room. Logan and I mm-hmm. talked about so many times about how, dude, the, when I got out of lockup mm-hmm. and was on parole, the first thing I did was went through my cell phone and started deleting and blocking numbers. Right. Because there was people. That I mean, you dude, didn't. You shouldn't. Didn't need to be hanging out with. Yeah, yeah like yeah. I don't need. Like, it was nice to know you, Joe. But the guys from the Glass Animals, I I don't need to. I don't yeah. need to talk to the Glass Animals guys. No. I don't need to talk to the chicks from <laughs> from uh, the coat hangers. No. I don't need to know. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's all these people that I ended up like selling drugs to when I worked there. You know, because yeah. I was like the guy they would all ask. Right. It's like I don't need any to know any of these people, but it trained me to just treat them all like. To me, they were all just like. Yeah. I mean, half those musicians are like, oh, you're just fucking junkie like I mean, me, man. Some of the best best things that have happened in my life, career wise, are from the, the those t- friendships that you made at Riot Room. You know, right. like like somebody suggests you for a tour because you worked sound for them, and then. You worked sound for them again, and then you opened up for them, and then like over the course of meeting them seven times, you end up becoming kind of sort of buddies, and then your name gets put put down for something down the road that you may not deserve necessarily, but because you were kind to somebody and right interacted with them, your name was at the front of their their mind. You know, like those those things are really valuable, and I think that that's one of the things that Kansas City has lost completely. Uh, right. With the kind of corporate takeover of the music, that's ha- well, just the, yeah. of the city in general. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, well, there's a vote on that crap today, which I don't know what the right answer is on the stadium thing, but I definitely know. Again, we're back to I'd fucking say, uh, bullies, vote, man. Vote yes, keep it out of Wyandotte County because we don't need it over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's fair, but I, I don't like bullies, man. Like, yeah, you oh, vote, give us, give us your tax money for a private endeavor or we're leaving that's bully shit like yeah I don't like which it. is like weird like i'm not a, a i'm not a huge stance. sports guy but like i'm not a sports guy at all i don't really care about any i don't of like it. i don't like I, I don't like rich people picking on poor people again I, if we had a like, hockey team i might be stoked yeah on. i'd be okay with that like oh yeah let's build a hockey stadium yeah but i don't i don't 
I don't I don't live in Jackson County, so I can't vote on that. But I'm know. a white co- I'm white coat till I die, dude. Same. Well, maybe not till I die, but until I leave Kansas City, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm white co- If I'm in the metro, it's probably here. Yeah. I can't afford to live. Otherwise, unless I can afford to live in Merriam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Merriam. <laughs> no, I've been, I I just know how to operate over here, really. That's it. Yeah. I know the law. Well, you're like, more in the city than I am. I'm even further west. I'm at, like, right at the edge of Argentine. Like, okay. Just, like, barely. I can barely even say I'm from Kansas City at this point. Like, no, it's still Kansas. I mean, KCK yeah. goes all the way out to the Legends, dude. Yeah. So, that's Kansas City. Yeah. You know? Yeah, a, Argentine ain't that. I mean, shit, you're, there's just space between houses out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. have that. I wish yeah. I did. Which I wouldn't be opposed to moving down. I like it over there. Man. I like, I like it right where I'm at right now. It's not bad. I'd like to buy me a house with a garage so I could work out of it. You yeah, know what I mean. But I dig it over here. I like, uh, you know, this is like an old Irish. It's uh, Czech over here, isn't it? The Irish Czech. Union, um, uh, the whole hill was like they yeah. always say it was like you know Croatia, Croatia, like, that, Croatia, Croatia. That's Croatia what I meant. Strawberry yeah. Hill. Yeah. There's a lot of Irish too. Like yeah. back in the in the fifties, a lot of Irish people out here in KCK yeah. still are. Uh, that's why there's all these you know there's like fifteen Catholic pubs, churches yeah. around here. Yeah, there's a bunch yeah. of pubs and my like my grandpa used to where Hillsiders is. Mm-hmm. My grandpa used to hang out there. Yeah, what was that? Before it was 403 Club, it was called something else, wasn't it? Uh, it was Maria's. Maria's, yeah. But before that, it was, it was the 403 Club. Oh, again? It was, originally, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. But my grandpa hung out there. He knew he knew all the dudes back yeah. in the day. Like all the, that's cool, man. All the... All the uh, Do you ever go... What's the that church in Strawberry Hill that has... St. St. John's. Anne, St. Or St. John's. Yeah, that has nah, a bowling dude. alley underneath. Nah, you ain't going to catch me in the basement of no Catholic church, dude. It's cool. I bet it is. Yeah. I bet it was real there's cool. There's lights and everything. Uh, there's a, some, there's some uh, grown man that was a boy once who does not think it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a problem with the Catholic church, dude. It's like yeah. a weird thing. I don't. I've got a problem with the church in general, but yeah, I'm okay with churches. But I don't that, have it, I don't have Roman, any problem with Christianity. I, don't know if I have a Roman problem with Catholic church. or not. That's and I don't know if it's just the like the Roman Catholic Church is. I just I think I think religion for profit is always a bad idea. Yeah, like, no yeah, matter no, no matter could, no matter uh, what the denomination is. Yeah, you and me can sit here and talk about yeah. Jesus right now, and that's technically having church. Yeah, uh, I mean literally. Yeah, literally. That's that's, <laughs> that's the, what it says. That's what it says. <laughs> Um, and like people have a weird time with that. A lot of our friends like aren't religious or spiritual. I don't think, yeah. or they don't talk about it. They're yeah. like, I think a lot of people are afraid of it. I'm not like, I don't, I don't talk about it a lot. Cause I don't think it's anybody's business. Yeah. Like, people like, I get a lot of people. It's right. The people that are right. Mm-hmm. Don't talk about it a lot. It's like the, Somebody's, but the people somebody's that like, aren't somebody's good at fighting. Yeah, the people Do that they tell aren't, you about all the fights they've been in. Yeah, 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 the people that aren't, they really want you to know how atheist they are. Yeah, yeah and why it sucks and why it's bullshit. And then yeah. like people say things to me, and sometimes I'd be like, "Yo, dude, like I literally have a giant crucifix tattooed on my back." Yeah, right? like it's like, "Hey, dude, like I'm on a different. I got a different thing going yeah. on. Like I believe in all of it. Mm-hmm. Like." And people think that's weird. I'm like, yo, I I can believe in. I honestly don't know what I believe. But I, I can believe in. But I don't uh, need. I don't need a, a higher power. But I can believe that Buddhism is real, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, Muslim is real, and uh, you know, Judaism is. Real. I can believe that all these things are real. Yeah, and I can believe that I. I, I mean, I truly think that they're all talking about the same. Sentient it's very being, likely, I you think. know what yeah. I mean? Like, there's one thing I do know though is that like all these people be talking about Jesus wasn't a real person. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> when who the, knows and who cares? The, yeah, like, but but also who he, cares? He did a lot of like, literature where it's yeah. like the Muslims was around too yeah. forever. Right. Like, and he's the a two prophet there. have been around yeah. the longest. Yeah. Both say this man existed. Yeah, like, maybe not the longest, but yeah, a long time. Long time. Yeah. No, it, I, I just, uh, the specifics on the arguments like that, I just don't think they matter at all. Yeah, no. It's, like, hey, does it help people? Yes. Yeah. Does it hurt people? 
Yes. So like, what is it that's hurting people and what is it that's helping people? And the thing that's helping people is the spirituality and the, the sense of family and belonging and things like that. Those are great things, right? right? And the things that are hurting people are the anger and the selfishness and the tax-free mansions <laughs> and and yeah. crap like that like that stuff know, like, and then it's like uh and the and they're just saying like hey you're this kind of person so you're evil right like that, that's nonsense it's, right it's just nonsense if you're if you're a muslim you got to be a terrorist if you're a Christian, you're a hate monger. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's Or, not, I mean, you know. It doesn't you, matter what. That, you were bringing up, like, the LGBT stuff. Like, yeah. Like, I think that Christianity has literally nothing to do with hating people like that. And people use Christianity right. as a tool for that. And it's as wrong, I think. Yeah. I also, when it comes to all that, I'm just like, again, it's like, dude, just do you. Yeah. Like, well, but hey, that's that's the major problem with organized religion is they don't just do you ever. Well, well, <laughs> they want to do everybody else and tell everybody else what to do. I think the, I don't even think it's just, I think it's organizations. That's yes. not even just religion, right? I agree. Like I agree. It's even just organizations. Because we're seeing the same thing. I heard somebody talking the other day about how it's like crazy that like an organization, if you're going to tell me what to do, you should benefit me somehow, like a union or right. like, you know, like if you're going to, if you're going to boss me around, you better be giving me something too. Yeah. Right. Not just taken. Yeah. Them fucking union guys, man. Bunch of dirty commies. There's nothing wrong with unions. Come on. Now. <laughs> Speaking of fights. <laughs> I'm not a, uh, uh, I, I understand why the unions were invented, mm. right? But like, I think they're more necessary. If anybody now than out ever. there thinks you're getting the best quality from a because it's a union job, oh no, not at all. But I don't think that um, that's the necessarily what the unions for. The unions to protect the workers. Yeah, you know, which they need. Like we, when, yeah. wealth, when wealth disparity is as large as it is right now, which literally maybe the greatest it's ever been in the history of the world. Again, bullies. Right. You got to have somebody stand up to the bullies, man. Yeah, like, I'm a. Uh, I don't know why I'm on that so hard today. You're just on that anti-bully shit. That's cool. I could never. Uh, it's the huh. rules and the regulations. Yeah. Like for me, mm. um, I need freedom. Right. So I became very good at what I do. Right. And my trade isn't that it used to be a union trade here, but the unions like it's hard to have a union in the body a, shop. It's or, like a hard or, thing. And just in a town that sucks yeah. for something for a trade like that. Right. You know, and so you can have your IBEWs and your auto workers. Yeah, the auto blah, blah, workers, blah, the factory stuff, I understand. Yeah. Um, there's just not enough body shop can, employees to have a union. Right. Like, I mean, not, you could, like, but the problem is it's like, Oh, there's 60 of you. <laughs> like, well, it's like the thing, like it's based off of your skill. Yeah. So when you're standing on a line, I mean, it's the same reason we don't have a musician. Putting screws in the union. dashboard. Yeah. Right. Or if you're the guy sweeping the floor in that same factory, right. I understand why those people need to make the same amount right. of money. Because if it was wasn't the case, then the guy sweeping the floor, we get screwed. He might not ever get the chance to make the money that the guy screwing in the dashboard makes. Right? Yeah. I understand it. When it comes to being in the body shop, mm. um, if I'm flagging a hundred hours a week and Larry's only flagging twenty. We by no means deserve are on the same this, amount of money. Deserve yeah. the same amount of money. Right. Like, yeah. It's 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 based on your skill. And music's a similar thing. That's what I'm right. saying. It's the same reason it's you same can't have a musicians' you, unit yeah. in a town this size. Right. You could, but it would be more destructive than it would helpful. Helpful. I feel right. like you know, like you, yeah, people, people got to be smart people. about that stuff. Well, because yeah. like now it's like, hey, you know, and even just being a musician, it's yeah. like when you're on the road. Yeah. It's like, hey, uh, okay, you know, you start off just making whatever you get off the door. Right. And then after a while, then you get the guarantee. Yeah. And then the guarantee is like, no matter what, you're paying me 500 or whatever or it is. Or versus, versus 80% of the door. Or, like, or, or it's usually, that's the minimum. And then you get more you're, if it you're does getting good. more if yep. it does better. Yep. And 
that was, uh, you know, and I, I'm lucky to learn all that shit from Timmy in Dallas. You yep. know what I mean? To understand how that worked and like really like that gave me a pretty good understanding about that business. And it sort of made me go, you know, uh, when there's a band from out of town, mm. I'm going to pay. Yeah. And then when there's a band that I'm friends with mm. now, I'm probably just going to pay. Yeah. I mean, no matter what, if I'm walking in someplace. Yeah. And there's music happening that's made by a human being with a real instrument and not I mean, maybe a DJ. I don't care about all that much. But if there's, a, if there's music being made by a human being and there's a cover charge, even if they're like, you're good, I'm paying. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, well, just, and so like what I'll do is no like. Way. That's literally stealing from your friends if you're not doing that. There's a few rare occasions you know, like, where there's been like a tour, like I wanted to see Madball. I didn't have any cash at the time. Yeah. And Kitty was like, dude, I'll fucking just put you on the guest list. It's yeah. literally almost sold out. Like it's fine. So, but then I go and it's like, okay, but I'll, I'll try to buy a shirt or something. Right. I don't drink, you know right. what I mean? I'm sober. So I have that going, but yeah, when it goes, that's my thing. It's like, if, if somebody lets me into their show, like, cause there's people that are like, you got to come, I'll put you on the list. I'm like, right. okay. Then I go down, but I'm going to give them, I'm going to buy their shit. I'm going right. to buy their record. I'm going to buy their t-shirt. Well, and I mean, let's be honest, $5 at the door versus a 20 or $30 t-shirt, one, one is going to help the band out a lot more. You know? Yeah, the t-shirt's yeah. going to help out yeah. a lot more for sure. Uh, but man, it just, you know. Well, if they're smart anyway. I yeah, guess, I guess smart. there's some people that are out there. Spending eighteen dollars a shirt on their they get them printed, yeah, yeah, which is crazy. The shirt game is crazy. Right it is now. real weird, man. As always, we we got a press in our basement now. I know you like, were telling yeah. me that last time we talked. I haven't been using it as much, uh, just because I don't have time. Yeah, but um, anytime I can print my own stuff, I'm definitely gonna. You got another it. shop in town that does the prints for you? No, um, I mean, if I was gonna go someplace in town, it would probably be seen. Um. And, you know, I've, like, thrown Zach some, some business over the years. Yep. But but it's a uh, – I mean, really, like, when your margins are as razor thin as they are when you're on the road, it's like, yeah, you may spend $8 on a shirt and sell it for 20 but you also just spend 120 bucks to get to the show – like right. you know, like just in gas and you gotta food pay that. Like, yeah, it's that whole thing. You gotta yeah, pay. It's like, it costs you gotta, a lot of money to need, operate. You need to have like four hundred percent profit margin on every shirt you're selling yeah. because it's not just the cost of the shirt; it's the cost of all the travel and right and all the other things and and the gear <laughs> that you have to maintain. And you know, like people, people. I don't think people realize how even when you're doing well, how thin those profit margins are. Oh, it's like, real thin. Like, it's everything is getting yeah. that. My business is getting that way. Yeah. Like that price of materials and like people not understanding the hours and hours it right. takes to do the, the that shit on yeah, cars. I mean, being on the road 200 days a year means you're right. spending the other 165 days. We've been literally trying to do off. this <laughs> since <laughs> I saw you yeah. at the feet. Was that fear that I saw you at? No. Wait, what show was oh. that? I think the last time I saw you was at a Heels show. No, it was at a. We originally the, it was at the Misfits it. tribute thing that Keenan played okay, guitar yep. for. Yeah, but we talked about it before then over the summer at damn Lemonade Park when I saw yeah. you. Yeah, and I don't, maybe that was Cretan Sixties. Who the fuck played there that we? It wasn't Cretan. It was <sighs> maybe it was Cretan. Haunted Creepies. Yeah, it was that. It was Haunted... dudes from Creepy. Creepy. No, it was Haunted Creepies yeah, played yeah. for some reason, That's what it was. which was a weird show. But yeah. Yeah, it was like right at the end of a Lemonade Park season. Yeah. That was, was like, like a year and a half ago, maybe. Like, that was, that's been a minute. No, that was last That was last year. Was it? It was last, last know, fall. Last but, couple years. But then weird, I man. did see you again, but that's, I mean, you've been gone. Yeah. A lot. So, yeah. Which is good. So yeah. you're doing Hyborian. Not anymore. No, you were. And I'm yeah. saying I'm trying yeah. to get us up to date right, with right, the right. Marty Bush legacy. Yeah. So we were at had Hyborian. Mm. We were rolling, shaking in that band. We were going yeah. to Europe. We were. We never got to. You didn't. Oh, that's we why didn't. you guys didn't get COVID. Yeah, it all got. Killed it, it, right? it, it killed it. Yeah. Damn. Is that what it, like was the beginning of the? I mean, we like me and Justin and Ryan specifically 
have been really good friends for a really long time. Um, you know, Bates played guitar in Salt the Earth for a yeah. while, like way back in the day. Um, but we just we hit it too hard, right? And we spent too much time in a van together. And I specifically wasn't mature enough to be the person who's doing a lot of the footwork and not get resentful. And right. so I got I got shitty basically. Yeah. Like, I was kind of an asshole towards the end of that band. And uh, there's not a lot of things that I would be like, man, I really regret this about my life. But that's a, that's a big one. Like, yeah. I kind of I kind of pushed those dudes away really hard. And, uh, you know, things happen. But uh, we're all talking to friends now. But yeah. it's, probably, it's probably good we're not playing in a band. Together. Yeah, I, I mean, band that'll band. happen, dude. It's hard. But, it's, but it's I'll, I'll, I'll definitely, I'll own most of the blame on that one for sure. Yeah, you know? but it happens. You know, and, but you guys had a good run. You made mm-hmm. some good records. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of hell, too, but it was yeah. a lot of fun. And then that led us to... I mean, during the pain... Okay, so... Yeah, it was so like Hybo- really Hyborian, during the pain. Hyborian, the last tour we went on, um, we left the day after my 40th birthday. Right. And uh, the day before, like the night before we're leaving... Um, I got told I was getting a divorce. And oh, so then God, I forgot all of it. Yeah. So then we go on tour. Right. And also that was a very good thing. It needed to happen. Right. I was pretty unhappy. Um but that tour especially, because I don't I'm already kind of to blame for like a lot of the problems we'd been having as a band, but then I was a mess, right? And oh, as one would be like and I can't remember who we were out with. Like, I honestly don't remember who we were touring with. Maybe it was Telekinetic Yeti. I'm not sure. Was he a weed eater, maybe? I, maybe. You were doing some big stuff. You guys. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember who we were out with. It's been, it hasn't even been that long, but it feels like it's been a really long time. But anyway, so then uh, get home from that tour, move into this, like, I mean, it was a nice apartment in a really shitty neighborhood. Right. Um, in a very small apartment. It was like, I think, 500 square foot or something like that. And uh, and it was like, everything's on lock. You know, so it was like, don't leave your house. Blah, blah, blah. I got real dark for a while, and I wrote a bunch of songs that I thought were going to be <clears throat> like a goth project. And then, <laughs> okay. and then, but the lyrics were like, dude, these are fucking country songs. Like, yeah. And so I'd like track the record, made some demos or whatever, and and here we are, like a few years later, I'm having a good time. I think it's what I should have been doing. Yeah, the whole time it really. Or it's it, obviously what kind of you know, started doing music. Yeah, right? it's what I grew up on. Right. You know, like it feels like home, and I think that's part of the thing too. Is like it was at a time where I was like real lost as a person, and so like making music that felt really comforting and like family you know like that it was probably really good for me yeah because i mean you dress it you've always dressed the exact (laughs) same v-neck shirt yeah and just the uh, a hat of some sorts but now you just tuck your shirt and it's the only difference that's (laughs) just because i'm skinny enough now that i can actually (laughs) tuck my shirt in i was hiding the gut back then like dude but yeah, no, Ryan, Ryan and Justin used to give me so much crap for wearing cowboy boots on stage in Hyborian. They were like, what are you doing? You're in a metal band. And I'm like. Dimebag Durrell? That's or they, right. Sydney? Well, maybe not. I think he was in combat boots all the time. But still. Right, like, his brother did. Right, exactly. Paul did, I guess. I don't think it's weird. I mean, I'm sure Poison probably wore. They, they, they wore some maybe different kind of cowboy boots. In that yeah, way. they were ladies' boots. <laughs> <laughs> they were cowboy boots. <laughs> Guns and our uh, Motley Crew definitely wore oh, cowboy yeah, boots. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they all did. Head Nugent wore them. Yeah, everybody's cowboy boots are probably pretty heavy metal, really. I, I, I would like to think so. Yeah. yeah, I just wasn't that concerned about the so aesthetics now, of the band, I guess. And that's the record, or mm-hmm. is this a, this, this is, is the new? No, this one. is a new one, yeah. Right. Yeah, that uh, that first record actually you can't get it anywhere now, um, but it's probably a good thing. Because it was kind of a rush job. Yeah. Because I really wanted to get out of that apartment, so I was trying to get on the road real fast. So I put it out without really spending the time on the mix and master that I should have. Um, so in May, that's coming out 
with a vinyl remaster and a couple oh, bonus cool. tracks. Um, like late May, early June. I don't think there's an actual date on it yet, but uh, the work's done and it sounds way better. Sick. <laughs> like I like well, and, that, that's a cool and, thing. And, and a couple new bonus tracks too. And you'll so be able to cool. take that on the road. So all these yeah. shows, when you go back around all your people, you'll have something yeah. new that they're going to have to get. Yeah. Well, this just came out in October. Yeah. I guess. So this is pretty new still. Yeah. I'm yeah. stoked to play it. And I'm going to be home all summer. I'm done done touring until September. So Sick. There will be a new record written before. So be playing, I can catch you around town now. Yeah. yeah. Actually, could you care if I plug a couple shows? Dude, plug away. Uh, let's see. Saturday at uh, West Sider with Martin Farrell. This Saturday, mm-hmm. uh, April. Wait, no. Hold on. Hold on. Where can they buy the record at, Marty? Do you have um, it in the record stores locally here? It's, it's in most of the record it's stores It's in most of the record here. stores, but what if they're online? Where, um, is, marty-bush.com. Marty-bush.com. Is where you get everything. Let's see, so the, 13th, the links. 13th, me and Martin Farrell are playing at uh, at West Sider. And then the 16th, I know these are like right next to each other, so it's kind of stinks. But uh, 13th, I, we're going to do like kind of a song swap thing. Yeah. Play with each other a little bit and kind of back each other up and just take turns leading stuff. Then on the 16th is a fucking fantastic show at, uh, at mini bar. It's uh, Chris Bruders from freight train rabbit killer. Yep. Solo me solo, uh, Sean Hess from Laramie solo. Whose new record wild onion is the best country record of the year so far. In my opinion, go check that out. Uh, and then Casper Allen, who's like on his way up. Right cool. now, that's uh, that's don't miss that show. That's gonna be a good one. Yeah, I'll come out to Mini Boy. I'll Probably see that. solid forty-five minute set for me. Yeah, I'll make Marty put me on the guest list after I talked all that shit. I'll right. hit him up there. <laughs> <No. laughs> talked all that shit. Be like, yo, Marty, put me on the list. <laughs> no, I'll come out to a Mini Bar show. Yeah, it should be I won't go one. into Westport anymore. I won't either. I'm, I'm like leery. It. I feel like uh, if I do, I'm Ubering in. I'm not driving my it, car. In. It, I got hit and ran too many times in that Yeah, last. Well, not even that. Just like, I always feel like, uh, I feel like if I go past the gas station, mm. like there's like a bad juju around that place yeah. where it's like, I always have to like look over my shoulder, you know yeah. what I mean? Which undoubtedly I'm probably fine. It's just college kid stupidity. Just, there's nothing yeah, wrong. I just like, don't even want to deal with it. Yeah, we're just too old. For that to be fun anymore. We're old man. now. Somebody said yeah. something the other day. I was like, dude, we're the old people now. Yeah. And I heard somebody say, it's like, it's just our time to be like, this is bullshit. Yeah. Fuck you guys. You know, I won't help you. <laughs> yeah. Like, but, Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> oh, dude, don't even get me started. People driving like maniacs. Ugh, the street racing me. is getting a little old in this town. I will say that. Yeah. The donuts. Yeah. The and donut the, kids. And the like, oh, I'm getting ready to cross the street. Here's 15 four wheelers doing wheelies that can't see me walking like that gets he's a little old dude yeah like, it definitely gets a little old. i'm sure they're having fun though oh yeah, and ha- if i was fun. on the dirt bike or the four-wheeler i would not be saying i don't that. i'm not down with the dirt bike and four-wheeler shit i'm cool with the the donut kids they don't they don't bother me too much that's whatever i mean they could do a little the donuts don't bother me as much as the like 95 through 30 mile an hour traffic yeah i don't it's like where there's pedestrians like yeah, that's gonna like that's gonna that somebody's gonna die somebody's gonna die i don't like that shit yeah well fuck dog on that on that grumpy old man note on that grumpy old man note brother thanks for coming over anytime hell yeah anytime man. you got some shit to promote all right feel free we'll get you uh i should have made marty bring a guitar to play a song or something but we'll do that yeah, next maybe time. next time we should, I, we should just start doing some, like, I, I should get with you. I got some ideas. We'll talk about that yeah. off off the air. But, uh, guys, you can follow. I'll put all Marty's shit in the, the links down below. If you get a chance, I mean, that's you really the only him. link. Go like, see him. Marty Marty's Dash. MartyDashBush.com. Natalie's link also a musician. Mm. We didn't really talk about her <laughs> this whole time. <laughs> she just had to bring her ass over. And yeah, you should do one with her. You, yeah. guys, you guys are getting some weird stuff, I'm sure. Yeah. You guys, oh, you guys, I've always in, I've enjoyed You guys both got some ideas. Meeting her like, and like talking to her. I love it talking to her. You may you may have to record that episode and never air it. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, everybody, thanks for watching. Do all the things. Find Marty. He's got he's everywhere. Spotify, mm-hmm. YouTube, Instagram, everything. Facebook. 
No TikToks. No TikToks. I'd be on the TikTok, but yeah. I just post I probably should, but again, old man shit, right? Uh, you got to do it like four times a day or it's, yeah. it's, it's, we're too old for TikTok. I shouldn't be doing it. I don't know why I am, but uh, all right, guys, we'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the like and subscribe buttons and check out one of these other videos. We'll see you next time.